the classic Californian coastline that I was talking about. And right on the edge of the cliff there, you can see the Point Reyes Lighthouse with his beam going through the fog. I thought I was going to get a sunrise here this morning, but with this mist, it's just not coming out. Mother Nature, totally unpredictable. The ocean, the waves, the cliffs. The shot's OK. Is it a gallery shot? Probably not. But honestly, shooting from this rocking boat is absolute bloody nightmare, because it's an unstable platform. I'm using everything I can, image stabiliser on here, a long lens, and I'm even trying to get as fast shutter speed as possible. I'm up to 1 400th of a second just to try and get this shot. But it's still not working for me. And I can't get any closer to the cliffs. Captain Steve Neal says it's just not safe. There are some outlying rocks, so we can't get in as close. But this shows you the rocks here. You got all these little guys out here. Yep. That's all. That's death. So I guess I don't call this the shipwreck coast for nothing, mate, do oh, I? No. I've never been this close to Point Reyes before. But I'm not giving up on getting my shot. Now that the sun's up, we're heading around the point to a safer place where we can dock. My plan is to switch gears and shoot the edge from a different point of view. I reckon I've got what I can from the boat. Now I'm going to scramble 300 foot up to the top of this lighthouse and try and get another shot from the ground. There are 71,000 acres making up Point Reyes National Seashore. The whole peninsula teeters on the San Andreas Fault and moves about two inches to the northwest every year with the rest of the Pacific Plate. Winds here can be as brutal as a Category 1 or 2 hurricane. It's one of the windiest places on the Pacific coast here, with gusts over 100 mile an hour. But it's ridiculous, could blow a bloody dog off a chain. Although when I show up to get a moody shot at what's supposed to be the foggiest place on the Pacific coast, the mist I saw from the boat this morning has completely disappeared. But the rare break in the weather has revealed an incredible scene. The old lighthouse standing silent guard over this perilous coastline. The whole lighthouse just really blends into the scene and actually makes it a lot better shot. This old beauty was built in 1870 as ship after ship wrecked on California's treacherous rocky coast. But there's not much room for me up here to set up a shot. And it's really, really tricky, because I'm sort of hemmed in right down the end of this cliff here. The winds are a huge problem too. In this low, diffused light, I need to shoot a long exposure. But any camera movement while the shutter's open will blur the shot. I've got to get out of this wind. So I'm going to do something unusual for a landscape photographer. Head indoors. A completely different perspective and something that I don't often do. But the whole lighthouse just blends in with the landscape so beautifully, it's hard not to take a shot. What a view. This is unreal. Right on the edge of the Californian coast. I mean, they just ooze charm and character, these old blokes. Look at that. I could spend days photographing Point Reyes, but there are still hundreds of miles of shoreline waiting to be explored. We're heading south now on Highway 1. 150 miles to a place called Big Sur. It's a stunning stretch of coast. Big Sur spans 90 miles of incredible vistas like this. It's no wonder it was given the name the Big South. But its beauty comes with vicious weather that frequently leads to rock slides and sections of road disappearing as cliffs crumble to the sea. Photographing Big Sur is never a sure thing. So it's tempting to pull over and shoot the first picturesque site that I come across. This classic old bridge coming up here. You see it on all the postcard shots. Here it is, Bixby Bridge. 
There you go. This is it. But I'm heading straight for one of the must-see spots in Big Sur. A place I've been itching to photograph since I hit California. McQuay Falls. As I'm driving in though, warm, wet, ocean air is sweeping in and cooling down over the hills, creating one of Big Sur's legendary dangerous fogs. Come all this way for a total whiteout? You bloody kidding me, mate? Typical, I got no fog at the lighthouse when I wanted some, and plenty now that I don't. With any luck, the sun will burn this off. More than 20 miles later, the mist still isn't thinning out. If anything, it's getting thicker. By the time I reach McWay Falls, I feel like I've been swallowed by a cloud. Right on the edge of America. And right on the edge of a major fog bank. I mean, I love the fog, but this is ridiculous. This narrow, spring-fed waterfall flows year-round and drops some 80 feet right onto the beach. I have an idea. I just need to find a vantage point high enough. And I think I've found a trail that might lead to someplace interesting. I knew it had to pay off somehow. Driving through the fog, I was sort of too low beneath the cloud level. I wanted to get above it and look down onto it. Look at the light on those cliffs. One minute they appear, then they disappear. But I've got to get this golden light blasting in that fog. It's like a huge reflector. This is what I was waiting for all day. This golden light is just so precious. Looks like those cliffs are just steaming. Feels like I'm in an aeroplane looking back down onto the clouds. I finally got my shot, but it's really frustrating to be separated from the true edge of the coastline by cliffs that are too treacherous to descend. So for the final leg of my journey, I'm going to head back out to open water. Another 240 miles south, just offshore of Los Angeles and Ventura are the eight Channel Islands. Five of them have been preserved as a national park. So remote and difficult to reach, it's one of the least visited parks in America. The only way to get to most of them is by boat. Hey, hey how's Sean. It how's it going, Pierre? How are you, legend? Good to see you, man. Sean Quine is skipper of the sailing vessel, The Good Wife, which he swears can get me out to the islands in just a couple of hours. Take me to the Channel Islands, legend. Let's go, man. Good idea. All right. Let's go. One mile of ocean around the Channel Islands and all the marine life in it is protected as part of the National Park. It's a great feeling, isn't it, mate? The fresh air is just unreal. What an incredible looking arch, mate. It looks amazing. Arch Rock probably started out as just another one of the 100 plus sea caves all over Anacapa. There's tons and tons of sea caves where it's just eroded and parts of the island have fallen off into the sea. On Anacapa alone, they have 130 separate caves. Finally, a chance to get up close and photograph the edge where ocean batters rock. This is crazy. Well, hold on, man. But as soon as I get in the Zodiac, it's plain to see that shooting from these waters is going to be a bloody nightmare. Oh, sh! it's as rough as guts out here. These waves aren't even that bad, but each time I get close to the cliffs, the ocean pushes me straight back out. I think it's too rough to get a good shot. You're not going to be able to hold that camera still. Sean thinks we're going to have better luck at Santa Cruz, which lies just beyond Anacapa in the island chain. 20 miles long, it's the largest of the Channel Islands. But that's going to be a lot of ground to cover. So, mate, my biggest challenge always is trying to find out actually where to take the bloody shot from, you know what I mean? Sean says our best bet might be a beach called Smuggler's Cove, but the sun's setting fast right in front of me. I can't capture it from the boat because I need to be on solid ground to shoot a long exposure and we will never make the beach in time. There's nothing worse than heading out towards a fiery sunset that's just out of reach. Look at the sunset, gone already. 
Rather than turn back empty-handed, Sean suggests we anchor overnight. Give me one final chance to capture that magic island. We'll get you up there for the sunrise. Tomorrow morning? We got tomorrow morning. Spent the night on the boat last night, just off Santa Cruz Island. And right now, it's like a big black silhouette in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I camped as close as possible to the shore so I can get there quickly this morning. So I'm going to jump on the Zodiac now and head to the shores of Santa Cruz Island. Heading now a couple of hundred yards in the shore there and see what I can get this morning. Love this time in the morning. The Earth just waking up. See the beautiful colours on the horizon. And it's a mystery to me, I don't know what's going to happen or even what the bloody hell's out there. That sunrise is going to come on fast, so I need to find my shot as soon as I hit the beach. All right. Good on you, mate. Thank you. I'm keeping my eye on that sunrise just behind one of those islands there. Getting as close as possible to the ocean. I'm using a long exposure to sort of, you know, swirl it all up. Because as that wave comes in, it gives these beautiful patterns in the foreground. There's a wave coming through here now. Hang on a second. And shooting right now. Look at that. This is by far my favourite shot. Love the way the water just swirls in the foreground when you get the shot. Got this colour you can't even describe just before it breaks the horizon. It's just like liquid gold. 